So it's my pleasure to introduce this video to you. Um, for me, this is something that I'm very, very happy to do. Um, I'd like to talk to you for a moment about Tomi Arayami before you watch this video. I met Tomi uh, back when he was 15 along with his twin brother. Um, they came along to Revelation TV and, you know, within just a few minutes of the interview, I knew this was something special. I knew these, these boys were something special. Since then, I've, I've watched them grow into men of God. And they both became pastors in their own right. I began to observe that they were maturing. And uh, Tommy, uh, being mentored by Sharon Stone, particularly began to emerge as a prophet. And not just a, a prophet, but a prophet to the nations. You may have seen some of the prophecies that, uh, or heard about some of the prophecies uh, that God has given to him. Uh, for example, he accurately prophesied that uh, David Cameron would be elected as the Prime Minister of the UK. This was uh, uh, a very, very precarious time in the UK. And it was incredible that the Lord had spoken of this event before it actually happened. He also accurately prophesied concerning uh, Britain leaving the European Union, Union. Brexit is now a term that is literally worldwide famous, but at the time it was very, very controversial and likely not to happen. As a fact, matter of fact, I remember that David Cameron himself staked his job on it. But you know, that whole situation was prophesied by Tommy Arami. In October 2016, Tommy called me and said that he had a word from the Lord concerning uh, President Trump, or uh, what I should say, concerning the upcoming elections in the USA. He said that God had spoken to him and that Trump was going to become the president. Here's just a snippet of what Tommy had to say. On uh, the 26th of August 2016 okay. and in the dream I saw uh, Donald Trump and we were in a kitchen together discussing okay. and he was thanking the church uh, to me for helping him win the presidential election. Now after watching that I'm sure you realize that not only was that an accurate prophecy but some of the things that, that the Lord used Tommy to say, the detail that was given, tells us that this is not just a prophet, but an accurate prophet. Now, when Tommy said that the Lord had given him an important word for Nigeria, I was very keen to hear what he had to say, or what the Lord had to say through Tommy. After hearing it, I believe you should be also. I was in Lagos earlier on this year and I was sitting down at my uncle's house on his birthday and he pointed out to me some of the videos and prophetic messages that I had given. He said, Tommy, you prophesied about Trump being president. Has God spoken to you about the Nigerian elections? And immediately I said, no, I've never assumed myself to be Nigeria's prophet or here on behalf of Nigeria. But here's what he said to me. He said, Tommy, I'm gonna pray tonight and God's gonna give you a dream. And we laughed it off. But that night I had a dream and this is what I want to share with you today. In my dream, I was standing before some kind of Senate meeting. There sat a number of military chiefs I was immediately drawn to the fact that these were military chiefs and not politicians or state representatives. I was brought with my hands held down by two military officers and it seemed as though somehow I was being put on trial. The leader of the house spoke up and it was quite obvious from his dress code that he was some kind of general or man of similar rank. He started to judge me and pass sentence, but his sentence was being passed not by any canon of Nigerian law, 
but by Islamic law. He was quoting verses of the Quran that I had apparently violated. I immediately spoke up and respectfully told him that I was not a Muslim. I was immediately silenced by the officers holding me in custody. The general then proceeded with his Islamic proverbs to pass sentence on me, and then I woke up. Now there are several things that the Lord gleaned to me from this dream, but one of the primary things to note before I even share what the Lord said to me is that any time the Lord gives a prophetic word concerning a nation and it seems negative, God is highlighting it as an area where he can hold the church responsible to decide the kind of future they want for their nation. The truth is, you and I get to choose the outcome. We get to decide what kind of future we want for our nation. By being ever aware of God's will, we can enforce it over the enemy's strategies of which we are no longer ignorant. And I think this is a good place to pray. Father, I just pray for all of those watching this word today, whether state, politicians, leaders, Christian or Muslim, wherever they are, Lord, I just pray, open their ears, open their spiritual eyes. Let this be a time of seizing responsibility on behalf of their nation in the name of Jesus. And everybody can say amen to that. So number one, the Lord said to me, pray against a return to the military coup of the 70s and 80s. When I had the dream, I immediately woke up and the Lord brought to my remembrance, and I'm not too keyed in on Nigerian politics at all, but the, I remember being a child when there was a late tyrant called President Abacha, and he ruled under a regime of tyranny. I was a young boy when Abacha lived and eventually died. It was around the 80s. I remember Nigerians dancing in the streets as the news in the UK reported his death. Even my parents were celebrating. Nigeria, the enemy is working hard to create the kind of conditions to stir up a return to the coup of the 80s. The Lord says, if you will pray, I will deal with the wrong balance of powers that have been an abomination to me. I will shut down military overreach in civil and political affairs. Number two, the Lord said to me, watch out Nigeria for Sharia through the back door. If Boko Haram and other jingoistic groups are Sharia through the front door, the enemy is going to try and bring Sharia through the back doors of government and military might. The Lord says there is a rising belief that the solution to corruption in Nigeria will be the enforcement of Sharia law on a federal level. Overreaching government sanctioned military councils will take the lead in spearheading projects to embed Sharia within the South much as it is in the North and will fundamentally rewrite education policies and employment policies in ways that favor Islam. Number three, rising sectarianism in the South. The Lord showed me that if Nigeria does not pray, then much of what's happening or has been happening in the North will affect the South. There will be a political move married with government endorsed military intimidation to force some into conformity to ideals that they simply do not agree with. It will put Nigeria into a similar state of crisis as in, in the North just as it is uh, in the north, it will affect the south. Extreme partisanship will begin to arise and in infighting among state Christians versus state Muslims. Number four, attempts to silence and censor media voices of dissent. I saw in the spirit deliberate moves by government through intimidation to silence media voices or voices of dissent. I saw it like a return to the old Abacha times. Um, this means that government is God and not to be spoken against. Now we know the scripture says affliction will not raise its head a second time. 
So it's definitely time for you and I as the church to pray so that history does not repeat itself. Number five, economic change fueling discontent and extremism. When Egypt was in a place in the Bible of social change and Pharaoh wanted to transform the society of Egypt after the death of Joseph, the book of Exodus said he appointed taskmasters. I saw the enemy appointing taskmasters that human rights councils would turn a blind eye to. I saw these taskmasters being deliberately employed for the purpose of whipping Nigerians into conformity, much like in Egypt. I saw Nigerians rising up in protest, but also extreme groups and radical vigilante groups rising up, some Muslims, others economic vigilantes, and they were fighting against draconian policies that solve corruption, oil corruption, money corruption, uh, Bitcoin corruption, but erode the economy. I saw increased infrastructure spending, but deficits so huge that Nigerians began to feel it in their wallets. I don't know if these are conditions for a military coup, but it certainly is an opportunity for the church in Nigeria to pray. I saw a move to build some kind of united mosque project especially within the South. I saw a bold statement being made that would seek to call Muslims everywhere to one location for the purpose of worship. Number seven, massive overhauls in immigrant deportations that will make the deportations of the early Ghanaians pale in comparison. And I saw this as an economic safety net. Now, let's talk about some strategies because we've heard some things that may not sound like amen words to you, but I believe that in the midst of every crisis that God always will raise up a divine strategy. So fasting watchmen and intercessors that change atmospheres, I would highlight as strategy number one. It's not enough to pray. And I say that as a man who believes that prayer changes things. But we must begin to pray with strategy and active implementation to see change affected in a nation. If God is speaking about division and infighting amongst member states, it's not enough to pray for Nigeria as a whole. But intercessors and watchmen should be raised in every state whose mission is to change the atmosphere and strategically pray for government at local and state levels. Number two, Prophet Muhammad versus the prophetic people of God. Now we know the Bible says that my sheep hear my voice. That means every single one of you, whether you're a prophet by office or not, you're a prophetic person. You're a person who Joel 2 says, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. That means if God is speaking about a migration of Islam from the north to the south, then there needs to be bold prophetic people in the nation that are courageous enough to rise to Mount Carmel prophetic movements. The Lord says, I will raise up prophets that will see Kaduna, for instance, as Carmel and they will deliberately and strategically hold meetings for the purpose of extending the true prophetic to a people that believe in a counter prophetic movement. I will ignite change in the north through prophetic evangelism and will begin to transform the culture of the north before it reaches the south but can I raise up Isaiah volunteers who will rise up on my behalf just like Isaiah did and say, here am I, Lord, send me. If that's you, just say it right now. Here am I, Lord, send me. And just like Elijah said, you call on Allah, I'll call on Jehovah. And the God that prophetically answers by fire, let him be God. Number three, apostolic fathers of the next generation. 
Many people don't know this, but a generation is born every 20 years, and each generation born is hardwired for something different. There's an awakening generation, there's an unraveling generation, there is an, a nomadic generation, but then there is a crisis generation. From 1981 to 1996, God has raised a new generation within Nigeria, and this generation is coming of age. I call them the crisis generation. It is this generation, God says, that will decide the future of Nigeria for the next 40 years. Did you hear that? For the next 40 years. Just like a generation in the book of Exodus got to decide to wonder for 40 years, this generation will be pivotal to Nigeria for the next 40 years. This generation has become increasingly disenfranchised from mainstream church assemblies. They are a pivotal generation, but they are hardwired differently. It's because of their unique hardwiring that previous generations do not fully understand them or even know how to assimilate with them. God is going to raise up principal shepherds after his heart. These shepherds will rise up in the spirit of Elijah to restore the generational gap. They will be in-betweeners and oddballs, like John the Baptist, not quite new, not quite old. They'll make room for negotiations between two generations because they speak the language of both. They understand the respect and protocol and holiness movements of their fathers, but they also appreciate the fire, zeal, and integration culture of this emergent generation. The Lord says, pray for the churches in Nigeria, for new wineskins will form and old wineskins will burst. But pray that every wineskin will have an ability to cater for this new generation. They'll be called the crisis generation. Begin to birth trainings for this generation. Begin to rise up with the entrepreneurial spirit and marketplace excellence. God is about to raise a revolution using a generation that speaks integration and not isolation. Holiness that is synergized with society and not separated from it. Number four, prophetic renewal. Nigeria, you are overdue for a prophetic renewal. God is going to heal all suspicions surrounding the prophetic by causing a new river of the prophetic to flow and clean out the swamps of old controlling cheating and manipulative prophetic movements. God will hold the prophetic in Nigeria to the highest standard among African nations because Nigeria has always been a beacon of hope and exporter of Christianity. It is its inheritance from the Lord. The Lord says, I will deal with all Jezebelic prophetic and announce a new day for the prophetic. It will ride upon a pure, undefiled current that will cause even those in Islamic territories to gather to hear the voice of a God that answers and a prophet that speaks forth the testimony of Jesus Christ. I will raise such integrity among the prophetic that it will once again be the first point of call in houses of power even before key policy decisions are made. Finally, pray for your leader. I saw health issues in the spirit that were being downplayed and things that God wanted to touch concerning your president. God is a redeemer and he happens to believe that your government is redeemable. Nigeria, pray for your president, pray for his health, heap blessings upon him and ask the Lord to hold him accountable to the Holy Spirit. God bless you, and I hope you've enjoyed watching this. Goodbye.